Hello, my name is Misty Lane Watkins, and I'm a Family Consumer Science Extension agent here in Rutherford County with UT TSU Extension. And today I will be doing a program with you called Healthy Homes. And this program is so important right now, and that's because people are spending a lot of time at home. It is estimated that Americans spend about 90% of their time indoors. And this is especially true for young children, the elderly, and the disabled. Today, we will be covering the seven principles of healthy housing, and they are keep your home dry, clean, ventilated, pest-free, safe, contaminant-free, and maintained. Please get a piece of paper and something to write with so you can take notes and do the quiz. All right, let's get started. So the first principle is keep it dry. Do you know what causes mold? Give yourself 10 points if you said moisture. Moisture is caused by common household activities such as cooking, cleaning, and taking showers. People, pets, and household appliances also produce moisture. Some other sources of moisture in our homes are plumbing and roofing leaks, condensation, and the mismanagement of rainwater. Your home should be built on a 5% slope so rainwater will drain away from the home. Some health problems that are associated with mold are upper respiratory problems, asthma, and pneumonia. The picture shows a cabinet with mold. You can clean mold as long as the area is 15 square feet or smaller. If it is greater than 15 square feet, then you should hire a professional. If you're cleaning the mold yourself, you want to make sure that you're using gloves and a mask and you can use a solution of bleach and water. More than likely, the source of moisture for that cabinet is a plumbing leak. So I always tell people that you should fix leaks as soon as possible because a small leak will always turn into a bigger problem. And it doesn't matter how many times you clean mold, as long as you have that moisture source, then the mold will come back. There are some things that you can do to control the growth of mold in your home. Anytime that you take a shower or that you're cooking, you want to make sure that you cut on the exhaust fan. And the exhaust fan is going to remove moisture from the air. You also need to make sure that your exhaust fan is working properly. So one of the things that you can do is the tissue test. So you just need to cut on your exhaust fan Get a piece of toilet tissue and put it on the fan. If it sticks, then that means it's working. Another thing that you can do is, after you take your shower, wipe down the shower wall. You can check the humidity levels in your home by buying a humidity kit. And the humidity kit will test to see if you have high levels of moisture. If it tests 50% or higher, then you should cut on your air conditioner. And if you have a humidifier, you wanna make sure that you cut it off. You can also buy a dehumidifier and that will dry out damp areas. The second principle is keep it clean. So give yourself 10 points if you damp dust, and then give yourself another 10 points if you damp sweep. You should always dust from top to bottom, and you should have a two bucket system. So you should have one bucket with warm, soapy water, and then you should have a second bucket with clean rinse water. And you want to make sure that you're changing the water out frequently. Also, you want to make sure that you purchase a vacuum cleaner 
with a HEPA filter. Do you know what HEPA stands for? Give yourself 10 points if you said high energy particulate air. HEPA filters remove dust mites out of the air. You do not have to go out and spend a lot of money on your vacuum cleaner, but you should get a vacuum cleaner with a beater bar and that also helps to pick up dust. You should vacuum at least once per week and you wanna make sure that you vacuum slowly and thoroughly. There are some other things that you can do to make sure that your home is clean. You can buy um, wire shelving and those are good because they don't allow dust to settle. And you should also keep knickknacks to a minimum. So give yourself 10 points if you do not have a lot of knickknacks. And the reason why is because they collect dust. You also want to make sure that you do not have a lot of clutter in your home. And that's because clutter can cause accidents, clutter can be a hiding place for pests, and clutter attracts dust. So you should have a four bag or four box system. So you should have one bag that you're gonna put stuff that you're gonna throw away, another for stuff that you're going to keep, another for stuff that you're going to sell, and another for stuff that you're going to give away. And now is a good time to start thinking about those things before you move, because you don't wanna take a bunch of stuff to your new home that you're not gonna use. About two thirds of household dust is brought in from the outdoors and the rest comes from us. So you should have a five step system to control dust in your home. So you wanna make sure that you have a hard surface walkway such as a sidewalk or brick pavers. Then you want to make sure that you have an outdoor mat in front of your front door, and this will be used to remove dirt. On the inside, you wanna have an indoor carpet pad, and this will be used to trap dust. And then you want to have hard surface floors, for example, vinyl, wood, or towel flooring. And then you should take your shoes off at the door. So give yourself 10 points if you take your shoes off when you enter your house. Okay, so I know you're wondering why I have a picture of a cat and a dog. Well, the reason why is because 70% of American homes have at least one dog or cat. And I know that people love their pets, but you should not let your pet sleep with you and get on your furniture. And that's because pets can cause allergic reactions. All right, do you know what a dust mite likes to eat? Give yourself 10 points if you said skin cells. That's correct. Dust mites dine on human and domesticated animal skin cells. And we shed about 30 to 40,000 skin cells per hour per year. So that equals up to eight pounds of skin cells. And dust mites thrive in hot, humid environments. They need about 70% humidity to thrive. So again, cutting on the air conditioning, um, using a dehumidifier can control the amount of dust and dust mites that you have in your home. In order to kill dust mites, you need to have, um, your water temperature set at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's a disclaimer. Your water heater should not be set higher than 120 to prevent burns. But the only way that you can kill dust mites is at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then of course you want to change your bed linens frequently and um, dust and vacuum your furniture. The next principle is keep it ventilated. And ventilation basically means that fresh air is circulating in the home and that the house has openings for pollution to escape from the inside. The air indoors can be about five to 10 times more polluted than the air outside. And poor ventilation is associated with 
common colds, the flu, pneumonia, and bronchitis. And of course, if you have the flu or pneumonia, then you're not going to school and your children are not going to work. So you want to make sure that you are um, ventilating. Um, and these are the items in your home that require ventilation. Your furnace, your hot water heater, your fireplace, wood burning stoves, gas and kerosene heaters, your clothes dryer, your kitchen range, and your exhaust fan. You should never um, heat your home with your stove. All right, give yourself 10 points if you always use the exhaust fan over your kitchen stove. Now I know that a lot of people don't like to use the exhaust fan and most people complain about it being too loud, but you should always use your exhaust fan and that's because it removes moisture, odor, and grease. And cockroaches love grease. So we want to make sure that we use our exhaust fan and that you wash the filter frequently. This picture, is um, a furnace and filter. And you want to make sure that you have your furnace inspected by a professional once per year, at least. And you should do it in the fall before it gets cold and before you turn on your heat. Now, you're probably wondering what is MERV and what does it mean? Well, MERV or minimum efficiency rating value, that is, um, the quality of your filter. In residential properties, your filter can range anywhere between a one to a 12. In um, hospitals or surgery centers, it would have to be a 13 up to a 16. And the higher the rating does not mean the better. And your filter is going to remove um, contaminants from the air. So um, for example, mold spores, um, the flu, it's going to remove um, pet dander, it's going to remove tobacco smoke. And so you want to make sure that you read your um, manufacturer's instructions for your furnace, and they will tell you what type of filter you should use. And you want to make sure that you're not using a filter that is higher than what they suggest because it could damage your furnace. And you want to change your filters out at least once per month if it's a lower rating and every three months if it's a higher rating filter. Give yourself 10 points if you checked your furnace filter um, within the last month and changed it. Carbon monoxide, also known as the silent killer, is removed by ventilation. Carbon monoxide poisoning causes fatigue, headaches, dizziness, and death. If you suspect that you have carbon monoxide poisoning, you should leave your house immediately and call 911. Do you know where you should place your carbon monoxide de detector? Give yourself 10 points if you said near each sleeping area and on each level of the house. You want to make sure that you change the battery on your carbon monoxide detector at least once per year. And you want to make sure that you replace your carbon monoxide detector every five to seven years. The fourth principle of a healthy home is keep it pest free. And pests have the same basic needs as humans. And that is food, water, and shelter. Health problems that are associated with pests and pesticides are eyes, nose, and throat irritations, skin rashes, nausea, stomach cramps, central nervous system damage, kidney damage, and the risk of cancer. 80% of human exposure to pesticides happens indoors. So we want to make sure that we use less toxic pesticides, um, for example, sticky traps or borax. 
integrated pest management or IPM basically means that you keep pests out and that you give them nowhere to hide. So things that you can do to prevent pests is to inspect your home on the exterior and the interior. You wanna make sure that you deny pest access into your home. So if you have a hole, you want to make sure that you seal it with caulk and you may even want to stuff it with copper mesh or steel wool first. Just remember that if you have a hole about as round as a nickel, a mouse can get its head through it. And if it can get its head through that hole, then the rest of its body will fit. On the inside of your home, you want to make sure that you are denying pests food and liquid. You want to make sure that you empty your garbage. You do not want to leave dirty dishes in the sink overnight and make sure that you sweep up crumbs. You also wanna make sure that you take care of leaks. Again, a small leak will turn into a big problem. If you have pets, do not leave their food out and you want to avoid storing food or other household items in cardboard. So you can store food in Ziploc bags or plastic storage food containers. And you can also purchase plastic totes to store household items versus cardboard. And that's because cockroaches love cardboard. Do you know what is frass? Give yourself 10 points if you said cockroach droppings and body fragments. And frass causes allergies and asthma. The fifth principle is keep it safe. Do you know what the difference is between an accident and an injury? An accident is something unexpected or something that you did not plan for. An injury is a wound that is caused by an external source. Add 10 points to your score if you have a fire escape plan. Add another 10 points to your score if you have rehearsed it. And as a bonus, give yourself 10 points if you have a fire extinguisher and you know how to use it. Another cause for injuries in the home is poisons. So you want to make sure that if you have young children that you are storing chemicals and medication out of their reach. Give yourself 10 points if you know or if you have posted the telephone number to the Poison Control Center. The number is 1-800-222-1222. Some other causes of home injuries are drownings, guns, choking, suffocation, burns, and falls. Adults over 80 are most likely to die from injuries in the home. If you smoke, you should not smoke in your home. And that's because smoking is the number one cause of house fires. If you like to burn candles, you should never leave them unattended. And if you have an attached garage, you should never let your car or your lawnmower run in an attached garage. The sixth principle is keep it contaminant free. Many products release contaminants into the air and they cause headaches, nausea, certain types of cancers and damage to different systems in the body. So you want to make sure that you always follow manufacturer's directions. You do not want to mix chemicals, for example, Clorox and ammonia. You want to make sure that you are using products in well-ventilated areas and you should only purchase what you need. Some examples of volatile organic compounds or VOCs that are brought into the home are cleaning products, paint, carpet, vinyl flooring, formaldehyde, air fresheners, and arts and crafts materials. 
Environmental tobacco smell, smoke affects our health and our home sales. So give yourself 10 points if you refuse to allow smoking in your home. Secondhand smoke is a leading cause of ear infections in children. So that's another reason why you should not smoke in your home. And just know if you want to quit, there are resources that are available to you. Another thing that you can do to remove contaminants from the air in your home is purchase an air purifier. And they cost anywhere between $50, $50 to $100. It just depends on um, the quality and the amount of contaminants that it can remove and also how many square feet that it covers. Something else that you can do is also use natural cleaning products. For example, lemon juice and olive oil can be used to polish your furniture. And then you can use the leftover lemons in your garbage disposal to freshen it. Salt and baking soda is used as an abrasive and it can be used to clean your bathtub and your shower. And you can also put baking soda in your washing machine to freshen it and um, also whiten your clothes. The same with vinegar. Um, vinegar can also be used to clean windows and also can be used to clean floors. Natural cleaning products are not only safe for the environment, but they are better for your health and they are cheaper. Give yourself 10 points if you read product labels. You can also go to www.hhs.gov to um, find out about the different products that you use in your home and um, the health risks that are associated with using those, pro those products. Lead poisoning, another contaminant that is found in the home, remains the number one environmental threat to children living in America. And the effects of lead poisoning to children's health are reduced IQ, learning disabilities, impaired hearing, reduced attention span, behavior problems, and anemia. And these are all irreversible, so prevention is key. Give yourself 10 points if you do not serve food or beverages in leaded crystal. Lead is used in a wide variety of consumer products that are found in the home. For example, your mini blinds, pottery, um, a lot of jewelry that you may um, buy from different countries. And so you want to make sure that you are making sure that your children wash your hands frequently. Also, if you choose to have a home garden, you wanna make sure that you plant it away from the road. So these are just a few of the things that you can do to prevent lead poisoning. And we have brochures and handout at the Rutherford County Extension Office that um, I can send to you by mail or you can always come by to get. Another contaminant that is found in the home is radon gas. And radon is caused by the breakdown of uranium in rocks and soil. And it enters the home through holes and cracks in the foundation. It can be found in new and old homes, and it is colorless, it is odorless, and it is tasteless. But it's the second leading cause of lung cancer. To remediate for radon, um, it can cost you anywhere between $800 to $2,500. And the only way to know if your home has radon is to test. You can purchase a long-term or a short-term radon testing kit. It is recommended that you start out with the short-term kit and the short-term kits um, last anywhere between two to 90 days. And then the long-term kits should remain in place for 90 days up to one year. And they should be used if the test results come back from the short-term kit high. 
you want to make sure that you place your radon kit in the lowest living area space of your home and you want to make sure that it is placed away from humidity and drafts so you don't want to put it by a door you do not want to place it in the kitchen or the bathroom and you want to make sure that it is placed 20 inches above the floor your kit should remain undisturbed for um, the duration of testing and it usually takes about two to three weeks to get your test results back so give yourself 10 points if you plan on having your home tested for radon. The next principle is keep it maintained. And I do not have a slide for keeping your home maintained, but I would just like to remind you that you should keep your home dry and making sure that you um, fix any roofing and plumbing leaks immediately. You want to make sure that your home's humidity level is not higher than 50 percent you want to keep your home clean you want to reduce clutter you want to uh, make sure that you are damp sweeping and damp uh, mopping um, you also want to make sure that you keep pests out and that you do not give them a place to hide you want to make sure that you're sealing all cracks and holes and that you are using less toxic pesticides you also wanna make sure that you are ventilating your home and that you are using your exhaust fan in your bathroom and your kitchen. And you wanna make sure that your home is contaminant free and that you test for radon and that you never allow smoking in your home. Keep your home safe by installing um, fire um, alarms, smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors and making sure that your water heater is set to a maximum of 120 degrees to prevent burns, but 140 degrees to kill dust mice. And that you are trout proofing and making sure that you are storing medication and chemicals out of children's reach. If you have any questions about having a healthy home and the principles that we covered today, you can always reach out to me at the Rutherford County Extension Office. You can call me at 615-898-7710 or you can email me. My email address is mlanewa at utk.edu. It's m-l-a-y-n-e-w-a at utk.edu. Thank you.